Hey guys and girls, Nathan here from the Be Invested Headquarters. Want to talk a little bit about this Corona scam. Um, call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, we could call it a property market crash, is that's what happening at the moment. Could we call it the 2020 GFD? Could we call it the 2008 GFC? Uh, guys, I just wanted to get out to you. Really, really busy at the moment. Got so many things happening, and it's important that I deliver to you guys uh, some messages. Uh, some of my views, some of my feedback, some of my thoughts on how you can capitalize on this time and obviously protect yourself along the way. So looking at it, um, you know, is it the corona scam? Is it the China virus? Whatever you want to call it. Um, is it going to be a property market crash? A lot of people are fearful of this time, rightly so, because you know, a lot of uneducated people out there. Um, there's a lot of fear going through the media, a lot of fear in the marketplace. And um, for me personally, I want to draw some similarities from the 2008 global financial crisis and the 2020 global financial depression. In 2008, it was a very different marketplace than what it is in 2020. Um, I called for a thing called a global financial depression, uh, which we haven't seen out in the marketplace until now, potentially cracks in the marketplace. This will end up in a full scale depression guys, uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, some differences uh, in the market, in 2008 in Australia, we had 9% interest rates. Uh, at the RBA, it was 7.25%. In 2020, we have 2% mortgage rates, and at the RBA, it is 0.25%, <laughs> guys. <laughs> it's not even a fucking half a percent. Um, and I believe like that we're really at the early days of this, my target range as I called two years ago was uh, negative two to negative 3% at the RBA. That's where I think we're gonna be heading at the negative two, negative 3% range. Um, in 2008, there was mortgage stress. Uh, if you go out to Western Sydney in 2008, every person was like, every second house had a, a mortgagee sign on it, bankruptcy sign, all that sort of stuff. Massive mortgage stress in 2008. Just remember, GFC, 9% interest rate, mortgage stress. Go to 2020 in the middle of the GFC. <laughs> I can't even look at this what I wrote with my notes and still keep a straight face. There is no, <laughs> no mortgage stress, guys. No mortgage stress. Because <laughs> you don't have to pay your fucking mortgage. <laughs> There's no defaults. You can pick up the phone now and call the bank and say, look, I can't afford to pay the mortgage <laughs> Oh, nothing at at two percent at the moment, and um, and there's no defaults, right? You can just put the mortgage on holiday. When in the history of the world could you put your mortgage on a holiday? So um, look, don't get me wrong, right? Put your mortgage on a holiday, you're gonna have to pay that interest sometime in the future. But like when you're paying off the extra interest today, in twenty years time, thirty years time, everything's been worthless and the dollar's lost all its value. Um, the uh, sorry, my light's turning off here. Um, you, you, it'll be a lot less, a lot easier to pay off. Um, in 2008, rents were either paid or they were not uh, because there was no stimulus. Rents were lower and all that sort of stuff. Um, I remember down in Western Sydney, my rents were 180 bucks a week, long vacancy, stuff like that. Now they're 300, 350 a week, long vacancy. Difference is, is that. Um, no one doesn't pay any rent anymore. <laughs> Who cares? The government's about to come and pay. So, you know, is there going to be an imminent market crash? What's going to happen with the property market? I think it's important that we observe and look at this stuff. So, there was no stimulus back in 2008. Now, I believe we're going to see the government pay the rents for tenants, um, and uh, and obviously we've got insurances and stuff like that in place. Um, in 2008 there was a boom in property. A lot of people think the property market collapsed in 2008. For example, in Sydney, the market collapsed in 2003 uh, until about 2008, when the interest rates came down from 7.25 uh, over a period of five months, it went down to 3%. So it went down by 66% over a period of five months. What happened is that that preserved the, the exciting market, which we've just seen. So in 2000, Eight, let's say the zero, let's say 200k house, 500k house, and a one mil house, uh, 2000, 2008, and 2020. 
everyone thinks properties has gone like this. It's had stages. The market in 03 to 08 was flat, actually, and it went backwards. Then when it went stable through the GFC and up a little bit in that period, went up a little bit. And then from here to about 2016, the market just fucking took off like that and went way up in a hockey stick fashion, went flat for the last couple of years and slightly backwards, and here we are starting a new boom. Now, the reason why the market took off in the GFC is because interest rates went down from 7.25 at the RBA all the way down to 3%. And if the economy was so great, we would have seen interest rates go up, but no, we've seen them come down to 1.5%. And on the 4th of June last year, we saw interest rates come down further and they were in free fall. Uh, it's a manipulated game, guys. Don't believe the media. It's a fucking scam. And we're in a Ponzi scheme. Uh, it's not the property market that is a problem. You need to get a good relationship with money. If you can get a good relationship with money, you'll understand what's about to come. So we've seen interest rates go from 7.25 to 3%. We saw this boom. We've seen interest rates go down from 1.5%. 1.5% all the way down to a quarter of a cent. Think about it this way, right? Everybody's getting this free money now. If you think interest rates are gonna go up all of a sudden, at free money at 0.25%, if interest rates went up by one quarter of a percent, the interest rate would be going up 100%. 100%, it would double, <laughs> right? The money will die, we will see uh, different things coming. I've got some words here which we'll get to shortly, but I just want to do some comparisons from GFC to GFD. There was a flight to safety, there was a boom. Right? Here we're going to see a boom and a flight to safety. What I am seeing at the moment is I've lost 30 deals in the last two weeks. And that isn't from people pulling out of the deals, that's from so many people piling into the property market. Why? People's super funds have been stolen, right? Where the fuck did your super fund go? That's the question everybody's asking. People's shares have dropped 40% in 40% in uh, three weeks. Uh, property doesn't fall. Where has you seen property fall by 40%? Uh, people are taking their money from paper assets and they're putting them into property, right? which is a hard asset. Either believe it or look back in the future and say, fuck, I'm suicidal because I missed the greatest opportunity uh, in the history. Um, so the stock market crash in 2008. We've seen a stock market crash in 2020. Super has been stolen in 2008. 2020, super has been stolen. We've seen in Australia over a period of two years in, uh, in the GFC, we saw uh, Kevin Rudd and all these cronies, and uh, they gave away $100 billion to people and everyone was like, oh wow, this guy fucking saved the day, right? We haven't even seen a crash yet. We've seen some people have to work from home, right? We've seen $200 billion in the first week in two stimulus packages. We're gonna see weekly stimulus packages occur. Um, this is like nothing else before. We've seen the Dow Jones go from seven uh, from 6,000 in the middle of the GFC. That's where it dropped to. We've seen the Dow Jones um, drop down to 18,000 points, now back up to 21,000. There is massive, massive money printing at the moment. It's called stimulus. They're all different practices and all different measures. It's just money flowing into the system. And um, that is what's gonna cause this next boom, right? The next boom will be a thing called a hyperinflation. Right? It's not that your house is going up in value, guys. It's that they're printing so much money that it, it is fraud. If you tried to print money, you'd end up in jail. But this, the central banks here are printing so much money, it's gonna kill the dollar, it's gonna kill the currency, we're gonna have a thing called a hyperinflation. If you think that we've got a fucked economy right now, you wait when you earn a million dollars a year, um, and that million dollars a year won't even buy you a Big Mac meal. Right? Imagine if you're on 50K, uh, let's assume, someone's on $50,000 a year. Now they earn $1 million. Um, your rent before was $20,000 per year. And now your rent is $300,000, right? You can take this rent that's coming in and pay out your debt-to-beat loans at that time. This is not a time where I'm gonna be paying off my loans. Um, 
I'm in the process of trying to acquire as much asset as I can. Interest rates are heading to zero, they're heading to negative rates, right? I've talked about this for two years. Um, this is a very, very crazy time. There will be a lot of people getting hurt, so I don't wanna be so excited and show you how excited I really am. But, you know, there is on any spectrum people getting hurt and people with opportunity, right? This is a time to remain level-headed. Um, no battle was won, no, won, no fight was won, no war was taken over um, with people that were, you know, unstable with their minds. And this is a time to be very clear, to get a great knowledge of what's happening out there in the marketplace, get a group of how things are happening, so once in a lifetime, it's like multi-generations, right? The last time something like this happened was in the 1920s, right? This is 100 years ago. If you have, or blessed to have old grandparents or elderly people in your life that you've been past, and they could talk about some of the effects of the, the, the depression. We are heading for a depression. Is this a depression right now? I don't even think we're in the depression right at this point. Uh, we've got a massive recession. We're gonna see so much stimulus being printed so much money that's going to be printed we're going to end up in a hyperinflation it's not the property that's gone up in value it's the money that you bought it with lost its value when there's so much money flowing around you don't even want the money right you want to put in the goods because goods are going up in value we're going to head with 50 years worth of inflation in a period of 10 years that's the next decade we're coming up to the thing with loans is that uh, loans are easy to obtain at the moment when we've got zero percent interest rates um, negative interest rates, banks will be paying us to take debt, um, everybody will be able to get a loan and they'll be so easy to get a loan at that point. The problem is, is that they're gonna put capital controls on, Apple will come back with a vengeance, Apple will come through and make it very difficult for people to get loans and that will be capital control. You can either sit on the sideline, cry like a bitch and go, this isn't gonna happen, or, uh, you know, it's going to be a big crash, I'm going to pick up. Let me ask you, what fucking state of mind uh, do you live in when you realise that there's not going to be a crash because there's no mortgage? How can you default when you're not even paying your mortgage? They're saying to you, in the history of the world, they've never said, hey, look, don't worry about paying your mortgage. It's all okay. We understand it, right? In the history of fucking never, right? So I don't know what, you know, all these people that are going to go, oh, there's going to be a crash now and all this. Look, there's going to be volatility for sure, right? And what I've talked about, right? If you guys have been a part of my mentoring program over the last two years where I was talking about this, I pre-warned you about this. There's a five-part webinar series where you can find more information about this. I talked about it years ago, right? At this point, people are going to be running for the doors. They're going to be running scared, right? Just as people think the property market is going to crash, people are going to you know, want to sell opportunities. If there was a fire and you had a big room, and there's a million people in the room, and there's a big fire, everybody runs for the exit, people are gonna get burnt there. They're gonna get fucking burnt big time, right? There's gonna be people sitting there crying in the middle of the fucking hall, and they're gonna lose oxygen, and they're not gonna be able to breathe, and they're gonna die too. But some smart fucker is gonna look and go, everybody's run, they've left their wallet, rings, and watches, mobile phones, and all jewelry, sitting there on the floor, they're gonna walk through in an orderly fashion and go, okay, I've calculated, that is a four hour burn time in the stairwell or in some server room or some storage room. They're gonna go through, pick up everything off the floor. They're gonna go wallet rings and watches, phones, possessions, whatever. They're gonna take everybody's shit. They're gonna walk, sit in that cupboard because they know that within four hours, fire brigade's gonna come, hose it all down. Half the people are gonna die. The other people are gonna be like, I need a phone, I need a wallet, I need my ID, whatever. Person walks out of the cupboard and goes, hey, who wants to uh, buy a wallet, ring, phone, whatever the case may be, and that is how you clean up the Monopoly board, right? I've done it for decades. I'm sharing it with you guys. Uh, hopefully, you guys will be on the right side of the curve, You're able to identify what opportunity looks like, be able to be educated to take advantage of the opportunities that lay out there. Uh, no one else in this space seems to be able to calculate common sense and, uh, and understand what has happened. And I don't blame them. Um, at the end of the day, retired in the middle of the GFC, and I'm cleaning up in the middle of the GFC, guys. Uh, be careful, be safe out there. Hope everyone's well. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.